In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Father Anastasios Hudson. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I serve several Orthodox missions. The two that I most commonly serve are St. Mark the Evangelist Orthodox Mission in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Nativity of the Holy Theotokos Orthodox Church in Greenville, North Carolina. We also have Holy Mother of God Orthodox Mission in Charlottesville, Virginia, which we are trying to get up and running. And people contact me frequently from other places, although, of course, I can't be all places at all times, so we're, of course, looking for other people to come and help us with our work. The story of how I became an Orthodox priest and how I started doing missionary work is something that I'll have to wait for another talk. Today I just want to talk about how I ended up becoming Orthodox in the first place. I was raised in Ohio, in Findlay, Ohio, a small town about 45 minutes, an hour south of Toledo. I, it was a small town and my extended family lived there and it was pretty much an ideal kind of life, uh, an ideal American life, um, small town benefits, family. It was a church environment. I was, uh, we went to the Lutheran church. We went almost every Sunday and were dedicated members of the church. When I moved at 11, we moved to Northern Virginia, um, to Sterling and then later Reston areas. And at that point, uh, things were very different. Um, I was exposed to many different cultures and uh, met people with different beliefs. And I really enjoyed that on the one hand. It was very nice uh, to meet people from all around the world and to discover other customs, other cultures, other languages, and other religious backgrounds. And I got to know many people that were different than me. We continued to go to the Lutheran Church there in, in Reston, Virginia. Unfortunately, uh, my parents got divorced, and this had a negative effect on me, of course. It led me to uh, question a lot of things and to become, uh, at some point, sad. And it um, also, though, led me deeper into introspection about what I actually believed and thought. I was a teenager, and most teenagers are busy playing and hanging out with their friends. And I, of course, did these things, but I always had a, a, a deep desire to read. And I read many, many books. This is before the internet uh, became popular, so I still was, uh, you know, mostly just reading books. And um, I would speak to friends about you know, different beliefs, philosophical topics, history, religion. As a teenager, I got interested in some of these new age, occultic type things, and um, I, I dabbled in that sort of thing for a few years on and off. I never stopped believing in Christ, and I never stopped considering myself a Lutheran. I just thought there was nothing incompatible with um, dabbling in New Age things on the side. Of course, if I had spoken with my minister, he probably would have dissuaded me from doing such things, but didn't really have in that it didn't have that kind of relationship with him. I went to catechism class and was confirmed in the Lutheran Church, and what I started to notice was that we talked a lot about what happened with Jesus, the Apostles, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and then what happened after the Apostles. Well, things went wrong. And then in the 1500s, Martin Luther came along, and thank God he fixed everything, right? What happened between point A and B, though? That's what I really wanted to know. There were vague references to there being Christians, but that the church overall was corrupt. The, the Roman Pope was corrupt and had ruined the church with you know, works righteousness, buying your way into heaven with indulgences and worshiping the Virgin Mary and all of these sorts of things, which I later, later learned were, were actually pretty much not true um, about what Roman Catholics actually believe. So I started investigating uh, Roman Catholicism. I had some Hispanic friends and they challenged me on my beliefs. They weren't the most um, strong um, in their literary abilities. They weren't um, very versed in apologetics uh, in defending their faith, but they would just ask me questions about my beliefs that got me tripped up all the time. So eventually I started reading all of the Catholic books, Roman Catholic books I could get my hands on, and I converted to become a Roman Catholic um, when I was 18 years old. I actually joined the um, Eastern Rite Catholic Church, the Byzantine Catholic Church, 
here in Raleigh because um, it was the tr most traditional church I could find, and the priest um, was a very wonderful person and uh, someone whom uh, I love very much still, and he taught me a lot of things um, in a way that other uh, Catholic priests in the area didn't seem able to do with their 30,000 member churches. They just couldn't get the kind of guidance you needed. Um, in my opinion, that's how I felt. Also, I was disturbed by some of the trends I saw going on in some of the modern Roman liturgies. Um, I saw all sorts of things in my time in the Roman Catholic Church. Um, confession experiences were, were bizarre. Uh, priests telling me that certain things, oh, that's not really a sin, you know, um, and, and just all sorts of feel-good religion, I guess you could say. Well, there were Orthodox churches around, and from my reading, I was starting to know that the Eastern Rite Catholic Church had once been Orthodox and had rejoined with the Pope, keeping its Eastern uh, liturgical rites, but accepting Roman primacy and the other disputed Catholic doctrines. So I started reaching out to the other Orthodox, also uh, to the Orthodox churches in the area, and my priest uh, gave me Orthodox spiritual books to read. And so I started to say to myself, well, here's all these, these Orthodox people who are but from strict Catholic standards, systematics, but they've attained these spiritual heights in a way that there don't seem to be many Eastern Rite Catholic authors um, writing about this or living this kind of life. Yet with Orthodox, we see that even today they still have the people living the kind of life that we're reading about in the past. So I wasn't sure though, because I didn't want to be one of these people that changes churches all the time. I didn't want to be, you know, kind of crazy, hopping from here every year, I'm a different church. Didn't want to do that. So I prayed about it, and I spent probably about six years really studying and thinking about it I um, before I actually joined the Orthodox Church. Um, what happened was I decided even to go to St. Vladimir's Seminary. At St. Vladimir's Seminary, I said, well, if I want to learn about Orthodoxy, I'm going to go do a degree in theology. Um, they will accept non-Orthodox students to study theology there. It is a theological school, besides being a training place for Orthodox priests. So I went there with the intention of learning about Orthodoxy, studying Orthodox theology, and perhaps being a professor someday, uh, open, in, open to the possibility of serving as a clergyman, if that's what God called me to do, but not, um, not intent on that. And still not sure whether I would remain Catholic or become Orthodox. In fact, when I went there, I intended to remain an Eastern Rite Catholic. I thought that I could help bridge the gap between the East and West, so to speak. Well, after a few months of being at the seminary, I pretty much realized that the Orthodox Church was the true church. What I discovered was that all of the Catholic writings that I had read, um, where the early church fathers had clearly shown and proven um, intercession to saints, um, the Virgin Mary's honor, um, ecumenical councils that the Eucharist is truly the body and blood of Christ, all of these topics which led me from Lutheranism to Catholicism, I had accepted on the evidence. Because I accepted hook, line, and sinker, though, I also bought into the idea of an infallible universal jurisdiction of the Roman Pope. I accepted the Roman Catholic interpretations of certain biblical texts, despite there being uh, evidence uh, against these interpretations in the Eastern Fathers. I just accepted that if this is the Church, I need to accept its authority uh, to understand these passages. However, I was, in my investigations into Orthodoxy, realized that there was another church that claimed to be the true church that had equally authoritative and spiritual teachers uh, that were teaching that these texts were not uh, saying what they say. And I realized that actually I had, because I had been open to the Catholic Church being correct on so many things, I kind of bought into their interpretation of the papacy, which was wrong. So I realized that the Orthodox view on apostolic succession, on bishops, on the uh, bishops of the church being equal, um, with a, no bishop having universal jurisdiction, some bishops having an administrative um, authority, that this was the more historical teaching. Um, I was helped along even in my un understanding by reading Roman Catholic scholars, such as Father 
uh, Francis Dvornik, who wrote um, such books as The Fodi and Sism and other such books, he um, clearly showed that a lot of these developments were, um, were developments. They weren't the teaching of the faith from the apostles. Um, also, um, reading about such figures as, as Pope Vigilius, who the great saint Justinian, the, em the em Roman Emperor Justinian, who is an Orthodox saint, uh, forced him uh, to uh, preach Orthodoxy because he wanted to uphold the three chapters heresy. Uh, stuff like that, realizing that the Pope changed his mind on teaching matters, and also the uh, issue of um, Honorius, who was condemned by ecumenical councils and anathematized by popes um, for hundreds of years later until that teaching began to conflict with papal infallibility. I'm aware that many Roman Catholics viewing this uh, are going to start giving me all sorts of objections as to why Pope Honorius did not speak um, ex cathedra and all of these, these arguments. I, I've read all your arguments, and let's face it, uh, Pope Honorius was being requested uh, by the Patriarch in Constantinople for an official position on what to teach his people. And uh, he wrote back monophyletism. Uh, he was a heretic and was anathematized. So I, I ceased to believe in Roman Catholic uh, teachings, but it pained me because I had learned so much in the Roman Catholic Church. I appreciate to this day so many things that the Roman Catholic Church does. Um, so much of the health care, so much of the teaching. So it was very hard to break with uh, the Catholic Church. Uh, my wife was not ready at that point, and so we took some more time to uh, look into things. And, and in that time, I decided to look into which jurisdiction or which Orthodox Church to join. Um, I did some research and uh, decided that um, there was a problem with um, ecumenism and with uh, the uh, unilateral adoption in some countries of the new calendar. And so I searched out for a traditional Orthodox Church, and it just so happened that uh, near St. Vladimir's Seminary, about 20 minutes away in Astoria, Queens, New York, is St. Markel's Cathedral, which is the cathedral of the Greek Old Calendar Church in America under Metropolitan Pavlos. So I began to go there and um, became acquainted with the church and um, decided after several months to a year that this is where I wanted to be. My wife and I had to return to North Carolina, though we graduated, and so we moved back to North Carolina, and we um, waited. I waited for her to decide um, which church uh, she wanted to join, and after some time, she decided finally that she agreed with the traditional Orthodox Church and decided to uh, join with me. And so we were uh, went up to New York uh, one day in the summer and were baptized into the Orthodox Church by three full immersions, uh, which is very important. And uh, we have since enjoyed our Orthodox life. We came back to Raleigh, started a mission, and eventually, thanks to God, I was made a priest. And now I try to share my experience with other people, both in person and on the internet. So that, in a nutshell, is how I became Orthodox. I realized that these uh, discussion, this discussion could go on. I could do many videos detailing in much more detail each one of the facets of my conversion. But, and maybe in the future I will do more videos, but I just wanted to give a brief overview of how I got from point A to point B. How I started off as a child, American child growing up Lutheran in Ohio, and now am a traditionalist Orthodox priest uh, serving missions in North Carolina. It's been quite a journey. But I thank God every step of the way that he's called me to this uh, because it brings me great joy and great blessing. And I pray that those watching will also receive the same blessing to be strengthened in their orthodoxy or to become orthodox themselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.